Hey guys, just before the video starts, I wish to say something. The next part of the story is the last part, but it does contain elements of blood and gore. I can say there's not much of it, but it will be there. So, if you are a bit scared of those particular elements, I would advise you to close this video and watch something with rainbows and unicorns in it, to cheer you up. And for the rest of you, you are still here. By watching this video, you have agreed of what the risks are, and you can handle the not safe for work content coming up. Thank you for listening, and enjoy the final part of The White Bunny. I couldn't sleep that night. No matter how hard I th tried, I couldn't get comfortable. I felt horrible. I had kicked Angel hard, even. I couldn't even get the squeal he made out of my head. So I decided to go downstairs to ease my mind with some tea. When I reached the bottom of the stairs, I couldn't believe my eyes. Angel was raiding the fridge. Angel, what are you doing? I shouted, not loud enough to wake the other animals up, but enough to make him jump in surprise. He turned and had a scared look on his face. Then he looked at the carrot he was holding and put it away before giving me a nervous smile. Now, Angel, you'll get your food in the morning. Now, go to the bunny village. I'm sure they'll have a place for you there to sleep, I told him as calmly as I could. Bunny Village was a place I had built for bunnies, hares, mice and rats to live. Angel had never been there before, since he was the only animal that slept inside the cottage. I was trying very hard not to get angry with him, but I still felt great anger inside me. D he didn't move. I knew what he was doing. He's pretending he didn't know what I was talking about. Angel? I mean it. I told you you can't sleep in the car cottage for a week. Get out. The bunny village is nice. I'm sure you like it there. I told him. Still no reaction, except folded arms. He won't respect you before you do something. Punish him properly, a voice in my head said. Something inside me knew that it was wrong to punish a helpless animal, but the voice sounded so reasonable, like it was a trance. I went to the kitchen and got a sharp knife. I hid it under my wing and I walked back to Angel. One last chance, Angel. I warned him. He did not leave the fridge, so I grabbed him between my hooves took him to the basement. The mayor had trusted me to hide all torture equipment in Ponyville after a crazy pony stole a torture chair from the museum. But all I needed was a tiny wood board with strong straps. I strapped Angel to it and took out the knife. This, of course, terrified him. But I was only giving him a warning. Without thinking, I cut off most of his left ear. He screamed, but no pony would hear him from the basement. He was bleeding. His blood was running down his face, mixing with tears as he ran down his cheek. I still don't know how I was able to be so emotionless while I took out some alcohol to clean the wound. He squealed and struggled, but couldn't get free. After I made sure that the wound was clean, I put away the knife under my wing released Angel from the straps and asked, Will you now do what as I say? He nodded. Good. And if you tell any of the animals of what happened here, things will go very badly for you. If anyone asks how your ear turned out that way, you say you got attacked by a wild animal. Understood? Another nod. Good. Now, get out. He ran outside as fast as he could. As soon as I cleaned my hooves and the knife from, from the blood, a wave of regret washed over me. I couldn't believe what I'd just done. 
I had never done such a thing in my life. My hooves were shaking as I reached the, for the teapot to make some calming tea. As I waited for the water to boil, I was still shaking. I looked at my hooves. They were clean, but I still felt like there was still blood on them. I was a nervous wreck. What if my friends find out? What if police found out? Either way, I'd get arrested for animal abuse. I jumped to when the teapot squealed. It sounded like angels scream. Hooves trembling. I took a teacup and poured. But my hooves weren't steady enough, so the teacup fell down with a crash. I picked up the pieces, but stopped it in my tracks when I saw the patterns of the cup were white bunnies. Don't panic, Fluttershy. It's just a coincidence. I told myself as I picked up the pieces and threw them in the trash. I took a new cup and started pouring. I felt a little better, and I, when I was done drinking, I looked in the cup to see if the, the tea leaves were made a shape. I almost jumped when I saw the tea leaves have formed a bunny. My hooves were trembling as I put away the pot and the cup and went back to upstairs. I didn't see Angel Bunny that morning. I had prepared his favourite salad to apologise, but he was nowhere to be seen. I flew nervously to the bunny's village, hoping to see him. A split second I saw him. He was in the hotel eating a carrot. When he saw me, he instantly closed the blinds of the room. I kneed down and whispered, Angel, I brought your favourite salad. I hope you can forgive me. When I didn't get a response, I left him. He had all the right in the world to hate me. I hated him too, but I was still regarded for doing such a thing. I hoped that if I left him, he would come outside and eat the salad. That was all I could do. I went to Ponyville to clear my mind. I thought I could do some grocery shopping. Or something to eat. Or maybe a gift for my husband. He would be going on a business trip soon. And an early birthday gift would be perfect. So I walked towards a gift shop and I had a look. Finally, I decided to buy a gift card he could use in any store in Equestria. The set out Belusa. Then I heard suddenly an angry shouting from the market. Curious, I flew to see what the fuss was about. I saw Carrot Top, Rose Luck, and Daisy surrounding a bunny. I instantly recognized him. Angel. I landed beside the mares. What did he do this time? I asked over a sigh. He raided my carrot supply, Carrot Top shouted angrily. He stomped over my roses, Rose Luck said. He bit over the stem of all my flowers, Daisy shouted, not fainting for once. How many bits do I have to pay you all? I asked casually. We have found out that your bunny had made damage for 360 bits, Rose Luck answered, 120 bits each. I paid them their bits and they walked away. Sorry. I said to the mares. I turned my head and glared at Angel. As ponies were leaving, I picked them up and put them in my saddlebag. A male looked like I was completely calm, but on the inside, I hated Angel more than ever. I can't explain it, but I started to have dark thoughts. I wanted to harm him. I didn't feel any regret for what I've done uh, the other night. He deserved what he got. He hasn't learned anything. He is a waste of an animal. There's no use in keeping him alive. The longer I thought about it, the more tempting it got. How satisfying would it be to see him die? I got to the cottage and went into the Everfree Forest. I picked up Angel alongside a knife I always carried around in case of the worst. I pinned him down with one hoof and held the knife with another. I shouted you. I fed you. I loved you. I let you sleep in the cottage. 
I always let you get the better food, and even let you break the rules. And how do you repay me? You steal from the town ponies, and the town ponies give me the bill. You have used all kindness all over the years for your selfish needs. I hope you're satisfied. To think that once I loved you, I yelled before I slit his throat. I watched him struggle against my hoof, but to no avail. Eventually, he choked to death. Unlike last time, I didn't feel regret. I felt happy. I felt free. I laughed. Not a happy laugh. A crazy laugh. I don't know how long I was laughing, but when I was done, I left Angel's body and found a river. I washed my hooves and the knife before putting it back in my bag. I flew back to the cottage, acting like nothing had happened. I continued the day in full cheer, and at the end of the day, me and my husband went to sleep.